speech, which was billed as a preview of his first 100 days in office, Donald Trump promised vengeance yesterday against the now 11 women who are accusing him of sexual misconduct. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. Total fabrication. <laughs> the events never happened. Never. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. Joining me now is Stephen Cortez, Trump campaign surrogate and member of Trump's National Hispanic Advisory Council. Always good to see you, Stephen. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Thanks so for having me. So we had Donald Trump delivering this address in Gettysburg. That is a place, as you know, many consider hallowed ground, given President Abraham Lincoln's historical address there. The tone of Trump's speech relative to seeking revenge on his accusers, you think that was the wrong tone to strike in this place? You know, look, I think when you, if you watch the totality of the speech, uh, that's not what the speech was really about. Was it part of it? Yes, of course. I think, unfortunately, because the media won't let go of this narrative, he does have to vociferously defend himself. Stephen, he do you think said, it's because the media won't let go of this narrative or because on this date an 11th woman came forward and it was rather shocking, again, the tone in this place. He lays out his speech in advance as being the first 100 days in office and then throws this as if he's throwing red meat to his followers. No, you know, I don't think it's throwing red meat. I think when you have unsubstantiated allegations, and by the way, there's a lot of those on both sides. If we want to wallow in the gutter, we can certainly talk a lot about the Clintons' past. Frankly, I don't think that's very relevant. I don't care a lot about what happened in Arkansas in the 1980s, what Hillary and Bill did that was inappropriate. I don't care a whole lot about allegations of New York nightclubs or wherever in the 1990s. I do care a ton about 2016 and the state that our country's in. And what Donald Trump did yesterday after he denied those allegations again is he laid out an incredibly detailed plan, a 28-point plan for what we'll do in the first 100 days to retake Washington for the people and to restart the economy for the American worker. And I would love for the press to focus even half as much on that as they are on his uh, promise that he's going to sue people. And look, everyone has legal recourse. If these women are defaming him, uh, he has legal recourse at some point. But that's not important to me as one of his advisors and as a campaign person. What's important is what is he going to do for America, that 28-point plan, the contract with the American voter. I think that that is optimistic, forward-looking, mm -hmm. and incredibly detailed. Look, I, I'm going to tell you, I was sitting at home. I was on a couch. I had a, a notepad, and I was taking notes on the points that he was making. But then you sort of drop your pen or your jaw, depending, when he uses the platform to advance the message the vote's going to be rigged. And let's listen to what he said about that. Okay. There are 1.8 million dead people that are registered right now to vote. And folks, folks, some of them vote. I wonder why. I wonder how that happened. They woke up from the dead and they went and voted. There are 2.8 million people that are registered in more than one state. So we'll vote here. Let's ride down the road. Let's vote next one. Maybe they'll vote for Trump. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this. Okay, look, that was yesterday, that was Cleveland, but the same tone was there in Gettysburg as well. So is he saying that his issue with voter fraud applies just to votes for Hillary? No, look, we don't want voter fraud, obviously, in any form. Uh, and it, it, I think it's most frequent when it does happen. Thankfully, I don't think it's deciding elections. I don't think it's going to decide this election. Uh, I wouldn't be emphasizing it quite as much as my candidate is. Uh, but to, to quote my favorite politician of all time, Ronald Reagan, I think we need to trust but verify. I trust that the results will be on the up and up. And I trust that, that fraud won't uh, sway this election one way or the other. But of course, we have to verify, as we've always done in this country. So that's why we have poll watchers from both countries, or excuse me, from uh, both parties. Parties, um, and that's why we need to be very careful about our voting systems. Uh, for instance, some of our voting systems we know have been hacked right now. Like that is a, a potential danger out there uh, that we need to be wary of on election day. But again, trust but verify. I trust that the election result, I trust it's going to come in our favor, but even if it doesn't, uh, that it will be clear and that there will be a mandate from the people and there's no chicanery which so, uh, pushed it one way or the other. Look, but we need to verify. I, I'm listening to you now. You said virtually the same thing on Friday when you're on our air here at MSNBC. Why is there a disconnect between his his message about vote rigging and those of the surrogates like yourself who insist that these concerns are not necessarily about polling place rigging. He's the one who's telling his followers and supporters, get out there, watch what happens at the polling places, make sure it's up and up. 
Sure. Well, listen, of course we should be watching just as the other side, the Clinton campaign. Democrats should be watching most of the time when there's cheating, by the way. And it, look, it does happen. We can't put our heads in the sand. Most of the time when cheating happens, it's in polling areas that are completely controlled by one party, whether it be Democrat or Republican. So those are probably the places to pay most attention to. Uh, but is that, in is terms that why of, Roger Stone question, is doing that? He's well, going to conduct know, these exit polls in nine cities that look, are heavy, Stone, heavily Democratic leading? He's often brought up to criticize us. He has had no role in our campaign for a very long time. He did, uh, you know, I think over a year ago. Uh, now, he's a Trump supporter, to be sure, but he has no official role at all in our campaign. And sometimes he says things that I think, frankly, do us some harm. Um, but, you know, to answer your question uh, regarding those surrogates versus Mr. Trump, uh, again, I, I'm not the candidate. Uh, I wouldn't be emphasizing this as much as he is, but I do understand that we have to be vigilant. Okay, let's take a look at some battleground states here in a map. And we suggest here that Trump could be on track to receive less electoral votes than Mitt Romney did. Trump has referred to Mitt Romney as a choke artist and a loser. You know, look, would you advise Donald Trump be a little more careful about making statements like that, given that they could be used to describe him if he loses? Well, it could be. I don't think so, though. We're going to fight very, very hard for the next two weeks. And when it comes to polls, too, here again, I think the press has been a bit unfair in general to our campaign because their polls are all over the place. We can find credible polls where we are leading nationally. We can find credible polls where we're down double digits nationally. Uh, I've been mostly watching the API polls because I think API is generally trusted as being a fairly objective organization. They show us within at least either tied or within four points in every single battleground state. So what that tells me is that this is going to be a horse race. It's going to be very close. I think a lot of folks uh, on the other side are already, it's football season, and I think they're already dancing in the end zone, and they should be careful about that uh, because I believe that we're getting into the red zone and we're going to score. So I think all of these states, Ohio, uh, Florida, Nevada, Pennsylvania, I believe all of them are going to be incredibly close, and we need to fight very hard in these next two weeks. It's why I'm very proud of my candidate, Donald Trump, for putting forth sub such a substantive and forward-looking and optimistic plan for how we revitalize America, because the status quo is just not okay. Our economy is crawling, and terror is on the march. We need to reverse both of those trends. All right, Stephen Cortez, I always appreciate our conversations. Uh, let's try and get you back next Sunday as well. Thank you Thank so you. much.